Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Gambit number one, cover dated December 1993. And this is the first issue of a four issue limited series focusing on the Cajun X-Man. So quite a designy cover here. It is uh, foil uh, embossed on cardstock paper and uh, the uh, logo looms incredibly large with the gold lettering. We've got the kinetically charged cards leaping th uh, being thrown towards the reader and Gambit here drawn by Lee Weeks who is the interior artist for the miniseries. Let's open it up to the first page and it opens in the French Quarter of New Orleans and we've got a couple of guys here mugging a woman uh, this guy's got a knife out and they're interrupted by the passing of this lanky fellow here. He is the tithe collector. He walks the streets traveled by few but the most foolhardy of tourists. Far away from Bourbon Street and the sound of the jazz bands. It has been seven years. Time for no another business transaction. Woe to any who interfere with the tithing. So who is this guy? What's the tithing about? Well, it's guild business and the two muggers recognize that and they decide to forget the girl and spread the word that guild business is afoot. But just as they're about to scarp her, these silhouetted figures land on the uh, floor of the back alley and one of them grabs them by the necks and cracks and breaks their necks. This guy here, he says, quick and clean, maggots of the street. It is the way of the Assassin's Guild. The piece is off. Time for all the thief families to die. And the gift of the tithe collector will be ours. So a little mystery there. Who exactly is the tithe collector? Who's he collecting tithes for? Uh, what? How does he fit in with the two guilds in New Orleans? The Assassin's Guild and the Thief's Guild. And of course Gambit is a former member of the Thief's Guild. So now we get our splash page here. We've got Gambit and Rogue in action in the Danger Room. And the title of the story, Tithing. Our creative team, Howard Mackey. Uh, story, art by Lee Weeks. Klaus Janssen, inks. Steve Buccellato, colorist. Richard Starkings, letterer. So I really, really like the art in this uh, limited series. I'm a big fan of Lee Weeks' work. Um, I regard his work as being influenced by uh, John Bushima, but then uh, Frank Miller too, and most particularly David Mazzucchelli. And Lee Weeks is coming off an excellent run on Daredevil, uh, working with Anna Senti and then DG Chichester as well. He was uh, the artist on the four issue uh, Fall of the Kingpin storyline. And um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of his art and I think he does an amazing job across the four issues of this series. And just something I wanna note here is, I like this little detail uh, where there is no holding line on his thigh here. That's a nice little detail, little uh, combination of uh, the pencils and Klaus Janssen's inking. And I'm a big fan of Klaus Janssen's inks too. I like the uh, skill uh, that he employs, um, his use of many different tools, brush, uh, dip pens as well as cutting in white media into uh, blacks and um, and um, other aspects of the inking and I'll point some of that out in the course of the issue. So another little thing to point out here on the splash page before I move on is we have a little uh, acknowledgement that Gambit is created by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. So Jim Lee of course didn't draw the first appearance of Gambit in Uncanny X-Men 266 You'll find a video of that issue here on the channel. That was Mike Collins was the artist for Gambit's first appearance. Uh, but Gambit was designed by Jim Lee. And in that video, you'll see me showing some of Jim Lee's pencil and ink designs for Gambit. So it's an exercise in the danger room. Uh, Ro gets into a spot of bother here. A nice anchor image here of her. Gambit uh, says that uh, he's going to help her out. She says she's fine, but he says, too late. He's already helped out with his uh, cards. And he says to her, but don't worry, you don't have to thank me though. You, me, and a candlelit dinner would be. And she's uh, telling him here like to watch his mouth and his back. 
And so the question is, where does this fall in relation to uh, X-Men continuity? Well, it definitely takes place before Wolverine 75. And does it take place after their date, date in Central Park, um, in Midtown Manhattan and Central Park in X-Men 24? Um, possibly, um, but certainly before Wolverine 75. And why is that? Well, if I get past these advertisements here, we shall see why, because Wolverine is there with the X-Men. So obviously in Wolverine 75, after Magneto ripped the adamantium from his skeleton, um, he uh, left the X-Men uh, uh, to go on his own adventures and pursue his own business. So here he is still with them. And he is up in the Danger Room uh, control booth uh, watching the scenario play out with Storm. And outside the mansion, though, there is a silhouetted, silhouetted figure who is breaching the X-Mansion security. I really like this image here of uh, Logan lighting up his cigar and the uh, uh, lighting here on his face. Uh, from the, the flame of his cigarette lighter, uh, really nicely done. And if you pay attention and you watch it and you look at this video in high definition, you can see Klaus Janssen cutting in some white media here, some white paint into uh, the black inks. Uh, really nicely done, I like it very much. So then um, oh, we have an editorial note that the events are taking place before Wolverine 75. And then we go back into the danger room, uh, but outside we see this figure uh, bypassing mansion security and then back to the danger room with Gambit and Rogue working together then Gambit gets into some trouble with these missiles coming in from behind him Rogue realizes that he's in trouble so does Storm up in the uh, control booth and she uh, moves to terminate the sequence but uh, Wolverine stops her and says not so fast you wanted to see how they operate under combat conditions so let's let, let it play they can handle it so rogue saves gambit this time and wolverine sits back satisfied um, puffing on a cigar and he uh, says told you so then we have some of this constant uh, uh perennial flirtation between gambit and rogue rogue looks pretty pleased with uh gambit being on top of her but then he gets up and says we got company and she's frustrated and she uh, thumps the floor uh, wrecking it in her frustration and here's this mysterious figure entering into the mansion but he's caught from behind by gambit i love this uh, shot and the uplighting here on the face and it turns out to be a thief not an assassin and someone known to gambit who could it be Henri. it's his brother in fact so um, Wolverine and Storm and Rogue arrive and Gambit says to them, everything's fine. Henri's a friend of mine from New Orleans. And um, then Gambit goes out to talk to him privately on the, on the veranda or porch. And Henri tells him, I came for you, bro. It's the tithing time. The guild, all of us have to be there together, even you. The stinking assassins be at it again. And Gambit asks about the peace. Broken after your last trip down to the Big Easy. Things have been getting ugly. So that was in the 1992 crossover between X-Men and Ghost Rider. Uh, so that's X-Men issues 8 and 9 and Ghost Rider issues 26 and 27. And Henri says, the stinking brother of your wife has stirred things up again. Julian, he's dead. I saw him die. Not all things are as they seem bro you know that says Henri come home Remy it's family ain't nothing more important than that and then he's shot in the chest with an arrow and he tells his brother as he dies it's them Remy the assassins guild they don't want the the tithing to take place you're needed you know their ways don't let them get it it's ours we've earned it use what you know find out what you don't not all things are as they seem he says Go see for yourself and take me home. So that is uh, for for burial. Take me to, or, or, or some, maybe something different, take me to our father. And Gambit agrees. So Henri bleeds out there, dying in Gambit's arms. The X-Men arriving too late. 
uh, in respect of the assassins. The Wolverine volunteers to go after them. They're heading towards Salem Center. He can scent them despite the, uh, the smoke from his cigar. He's ready to bounce over the railing here. But Gambit says no, he wants to go alone. So he leaps over uh, the railing of the veranda or porch and says it's a family matter. Rogue wants to go after him, but Wolverine says uh, no. He says, we stay, it's what he wants. The Cajun's gotta handle this himself. It's a blood debt. And I pity those on the receiving end. So Gambit's heading off on foot to uh, Salem Center, but the scene shifts to New Orleans. Nice establishing shot here. And then we zero in on the High Council of the Thieves Guild, making preparations for coming events. So this guy here is talking about the tithe collector of our benefactress will soon arrive. So who is their benefactress? The ceremony will commence tomorrow. And he says, all our families have been sent word to return with their tribute. For some, it will be the first tasting of the elixir. I propose that Remy Lebeau be permitted to accept this year. So there's some debate about that. This guy here says he's young, brash, impulsive, and not truly one of ours. But Jean-Luc here says, let's see. And then scene switches here, bottom of the page, to Paris, France. And this is a great establishing shot of Paris. Of course, you've got to have the Eiffel Tower in there and uh, the rooftops of Paris. And who is this uh, woman? Well, the narrative captions tell her, the woman named, now, my guess here is, I know she showed up in the X-Men animated series and her name would have been pronounced there, but I didn't watch that. So I'm gonna go with Sandra. You can tell me in the comments if I have that wrong. So the woman named Sandra gazes out upon the city of lights. In her long life, she has seen many new lights added to the Parisian skyline, for she is mutant with the additional gift of long life. She is an external. And there's somebody with her here from the pages of New Mutants and X-Force, it's Gideon. So he's in some kind of relationship with Sandra. And she says, nothing ever truly changes for us. At times I crave for some excitement in this long life. Who knows, perhaps one day soon. Well, probably some excitement is coming her way in the form of Gambit. I think we can lay a bet on that one. And then here he is chasing the two assassins in the woods outside Salem Center. One of them turns around and uh, shoots at him, but he dodges the blast. And then he continues chasing after them sending a kinetically charged tree branch after them, which explodes behind them. And now he follows them with his kinetically charged cards. Great action uh, storytelling on these pages. Continuing with them here, following them into uh, a building um, down a back alley. He's picking the lock here. This is nicely illustrated as well. And then we have an upshot of him entering this, what is it, storage room telling them, are you waiting in the dark for me, assassins? I'm coming, even as he has time to smoke a cigarette. That's how, that's how cool and calm and collected he is going in there. And then we're back at the X-Mansion and a little heart-to-heart uh, -heart between Wolverine and Rogue. And Wolverine says to her, he'll be all right, kid. There's more to the Cajun than any of us really knows. And then she says, and this is the first time we've ever heard it from her, I love him, Wolverine. And Wolverine says, you don't have to be a telepath to figure that one out. This thing he's doing tonight, he's got to do it alone. But after tonight, don't let him be alone again. There's something between you two. Mariko and I had the same. Don't wait. Don't want to wait until conditions are perfect. Because with the likes of us, they never are. And this is Wolverine speaking after Mariko's death. Um, so he knows what he's talking about. Then we're back to Gambit in the warehouse or a storage um, building. And he is calling out the assassins, calls them cowards here. This is a great three quarter profile, slight upshot as well on his face. They blast him, hit one of the crates, storage crates, and now there's a gang of them coming after him. But he's prepared to handle them, sending out um, a, a trio of kinetically charged cards. Let the cards fall where they may, he says. So the cards, Blast, here he is, uh, leaping into action, kicking one of them in the head. And he's saying here, cards were nothing but a distraction. I want you to see everything you're getting hit with. 
You'll know where every blow is coming from. A chance my brother never had. Cum killers were not done yet. So, interesting to see Maki pulling back here on the narrative captions, letting the art speak for itself for the most part, and keeping Gambit's uh, dialogue down to a minimum on uh, this page in particular. Um, I always appreciate when writers restrain themselves from overriding well-illustrated uh, comic storytelling. So now this figure in silhouette applauds him and it turns out to be Belladonna's brother. That's Gambit's wife's, well, as far as Gambit knows, dead wife's brother, whom he thought to have killed in a duel, which was the reason he fled New Orleans in the first place in order to preserve the peace between the Assassins and Thieves guilds. Um, so now it's another duel between the two. And Gambit says the second time presents no challenge and little profit. I don't know how or why you're still alive, but this is for Omri. And he skewers Julian again through the chest, but it doesn't kill him. And he says to Gambit, looking pale, Remy, know that it is me, your wife's brother. You won't be killing me again, mon ami. I'm here to stay. So there's a portal open for them. So they disappear through the portal and Julian says to Gambit, I've got a job to do, uh, Teeth, for my sister Remy. Belladonna almost died because of you, but I've kept her alive. We assassins got the power, you Teeth's got the life. It's time for us to have both. So he heads off and Belladonna, alive, Gambit says quietly. And then he's back later on at the X-Mansion and he obviously tells the X-Men uh, what happened and Rogue asks how we all saw her die and then Bob Harris typical of Bob Harris when he does give a footnote here it's the wrong issue number so he's got X-Men number eight there no it was X-Men number nine that we saw Belladonna die and uh, she continues Rogue asking Gambit what's going on Gambit first your brother now Belladonna is it all tied into this tithing thing and he says, can't be answering that yet. Don't know that I would if I could. I'll be leaving for New Orleans to get some answers. So Wolverine says, you need a hand down there. I'm always up for a road trip. But Gambit says, it's a family thing. Wolverine understands. Professor X says, look, your family as well. What about we X-Men come along to help you? And um, Rogue here says, he won't be traveling solo. I'll be with him all the way. And here we are, last page. So Gambit says no, but she isn't gonna take no for an answer. And he says to her, okay, someday you'll find out just how much of a man I am, Cher. Until then, come if you want, but no, I'm going to find out if Belladonna, my wife, is alive. And you better be sh real sure you're up to this one, Cher. There are some things about me that you may not want to learn. And she says, I'll take the chance on that one, sugar. And then we're back to the tithe uh, collector uh, because beware, it's the tithing time. So there we are. First issue of a four issue limited series, Gambit's first and an incredibly popular one back in 1993, early 1994. I do hope you enjoyed this review and commentary on the issue. If you did, like the video on YouTube and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.